sometimes we hear things that sound good. Sometimes we go out and buy things that look good. Sometimes we purchase or we're given things that on the outside look wonderful. And so we learn from our experiences that we can't always judge a book by its cover or we can't always go by what we think we know or go by something that we just only take a cursory examination of. We just look at it superficially, you know, on the outward things. When you buy a car, you know, you kind of want to take it for a test drive, make sure it runs. And there's all kinds of little additives you can put in your car to make it run pretty good for your test drive. But when we take it to a mechanic, a mechanic can get inside the nuts and bolts, you know, kind of tell you better how or what is going on with the car. But you know, people recently have been doing something that is even beyond the mechanic story. They go out and they get a report on the history of that car. I forget what it's called, like CarMax or something like that. I can't remember the name of it exactly. But basically what it does is that it tells you from the moment it was purchased all the history of the repairs that have gone on on that car. Or if it's been in any accidents based upon the VIN number, the vehicle identification number. And so you can get kind of a, a report on your car that you're getting ready to purchase, your used car. And a lot of people want new cars, but you know, sometimes when you buy a new car, you know, down the road they say, oh well, we need to recall it because, you know, there's things that need to be fixed. And if you don't hear that recall, you don't know they need to be fixed because they don't send you personally a letter. So your experience probably is a better guide than just going by what you see or what you think you hear. And sometimes you have to go beyond that. And that's why in all of our lives, our past is an important indicator of our present and it helps us to look forward to the future. You see, God wanted us to remember our past. He doesn't want us to forget the things that are past, only you know those bad things that happened. But he wants to look at it from his perspective that those aren't as important as where you're going in the future, but not to reject them completely. In other words, we have a testimony of where we were from to where we are to where we're going. The things which were, the things which are, and the things which shall be. That's the way God is described. Because, you see, God exists outside of time. He's in a dimension that goes beyond time. Because time is a, a limited function that only operates in a certain dimension. It can only affect other dimensions that are in its suborder. In other words, time exists on one plane. And just kind of like, you know, we have paper that exists on one plane. Paper is a one-dimensional thing. And it's just like flat. Then you have two dimensions where you have height and depth and width, you know, and then you have three dimensions which, you know, it gives you more and then four and five. But time is a dimension also. The greater you get, the more you exist outside of that dimension, the more that you incorporate the rest of those dimensions. And so God, as the greater of all these dimensions, exists outside of that. And because he does, he can see the future from the present, from the past, as all one. Interesting way of looking at it, Einstein's perspective of giving us that ability to think outside the box and realize if God is God, then we have to think outside of our box or limited perspective of only looking at things that sound good, that look good, that maybe we think are good. But when you look at them from the scriptural point of view, don't fit cooperatively with the Word of God. And that's kind of how you tell truth from error. Does it cooperate with the Word of God? In other words, does it complement? Does it fit inside the Word of God? Does it make the Word of God more alive? Are there pieces of the Word of God that contradict what you're saying? And sometimes when people say, forget the past, that's kind of, uh, you know, old things are passed away, behold, all things become new, is good. But it also says, remember the former things. Remember the things of old. Remember the words that God has spoken to you. And so there's kind of like you could say a contradiction there, unless you put it into proper perspective. Because you see, your past is a valuable tool of where you came from to measure where you're going to. 
So you have a point of reference. You can remember possibly the day you got saved, you know, and you can kind of tell whether you've left your first love. That's one way of doing it. Or in other ways, lots of times people will use their past to say, hey, you know, I've been there. I've done that. I know what it's like. And that's one tool of your past that God can use to inspire you to reach across your perspective and experiences to someone else's life that doesn't have the perspective and experiences that you do. That's what we call being sagely, or being wise, or being mature, being able to use those things that God has used in your life to touch another life. And that's part of using or appreciating our past, recounting or remembering, to look at the things which God has done and then look at the way that God worked in those circumstances and then ask him what he's doing today so that we can move forward into the future to know that there is a hope for our calling, there is a confidence, there is an assurance because God doesn't change. If he's done it in the past for you, he'll do it in the future. He is always the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. Was, is, and ever shall be. It's pretty simple, really. So, it's good in some ways when people want to do kind of like, you know, they used to say a healing of memories or they want to forget some pain or some suffering or some scar that, you know, has happened in their life, some bad thing. Well, you know, in, in a lot of ways, that's not what the Bible did, you know, when it recorded all of, or most of, you know, David's life or different people in the scriptures' lives in recording the good and the bad, because God will recount to us our lives as we've lived them in some way. We don't completely understand how, but we know that we'll be forgiven because we've already been forgiven. We'll be made new and that we'll have a experience in God that old things will be all passed away. We won't have this memory or this whispering in our ear of the bad things we've done. But rather God does want us to remember the good things that he's done. And sometimes that means he's taking you through things that you can look at. It was good that you had gone through some experience of failing or some bad experience in order to bring out the good of God as he worked in you or he worked on you to bring you to his place he wanted you to be. It's not easy. Sometimes people look at some major catastrophe in their life where their, their spiritual house, so to speak, or their physical body was torn down. I mean, literally leveled to the ground, the foundation stones, you know, where it was like, oh my God, except for the Lord had delivered them. They were that close to death, and yet they live. Now, that experience sometimes for some people, not me, but some people, that will leave permanent scars, baggage that carries on into their life, and sometimes it's a negative thing. But that's not really the way God intends it to be. God wants to take and remake a life into His structure, His foundation, His building of God his temple of the Holy Spirit, that there might be the glory and praise unto him for what he has done with a life that has been leveled or completely removed from what most people would say is the happiness or the joy or the peace or the confidence. How can a person possibly be or ever recover from that devastation? You know, Moses might have asked that question. Here Moses was on top of the world. He had it all. He was the son of the son, you know, I mean, he was ready to inherit everything. And yet, he knew there was something missing, and he saw something wrong, and he tried to act accordingly, and he failed. And in that failure, he was cast out from that with which he thought he was supposed to do. He was despised and rejected. He was a murderer of all things. He killed in the name of God. And so, 40 years, he wandered in the wilderness, and he learned. And he thought, and he considered, and he pondered until the day that God had prepared him by way of being removed from those influences and being alone with God, that he was ready to be used of God once again. And so we see in our past, there are things that, yes, God will take and remake into his image. So 
when we were able to, in our older age, look back on them, we can recount the stories of old, the victories we've won, the circumstances that brought us to the place of knowing God in a more personal, intimate way, in a relationship that established itself through our past into our present and led us into the future. Never be so fearful of what you've done, but rather be glad of what God is doing and look forward to what God will accomplish with what you've already been through. Because once you see it from his perspective, you realize, yes, even though you may not understand, it was meant to be. Consider how great things he has done for you. Thou shalt remember all the ways which the Lord thy God led thee these forty years in the wilderness to humble thee and to prove thee and to know what was in thine heart, whether thou wouldst keep his commandments or not. Thou shalt also consider in thine heart that as a man chasteneth his son, so the Lord thy God chastens you. I know, O Lord, that thy judgments are right, and that thou in faithfulness hast afflicted me. It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I might learn your statutes. Before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now I have kept thy word. The Lord has chastened me sore, but he has not given me over unto death. He has not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. But as the heavens is high above the earth, so great is his mercy towards them that fear him. He knows our frame, and he remembers that we are dust. I cannot help but think with such a word that God has given us that we would not open up our lives and be glad, rejoicing in even the midst of all these things that have come upon us because we did not die, but we lived in order to go forward to declare how God delivered us, not only from death or suffering, or misery, or whatever circumstances you faced, but also from yourself, your own self-condemnation, your own fears, your own failures, your own whisperings in your ears of how you weren't good enough, that you weren't right enough, that you weren't perfect, and yet God brought you today to where you are. God today is using you. God today is speaking with you. And so, why not embrace those things that have happened in our past to bring us to our present and to lead us into the future? Because after all, God is for us. Nothing can be against us. Not even those things we've already been through, much less the things that we are yet to go through.